Hello, I'm here with Mr. Saldana, consultant ophthalmologist specialising in cornea. So thanks for letting us interview you today. Thank you, Amy, for interviewing me. Uh, so you went on your fellowship last year. Where did you go and what did you do? Uh, I went actually two years ago, Amy, and uh, I chose to go to Toronto uh, to do a cornea fellowship. Uh, it was for 24 months or two years. The reason I went to Toronto is uh, because that was a centre which had two perceptors. They're quite well known. Uh, one is David Rootman, who is among a pioneer in the DMEX surgery, and the other is uh, Alan Slomovic, who's the head of the Canadian Ophthalmic Society, who does a lot of ocular surface. Uh, problems with deals with Boston keratoprosthesis um, besides uh, numerous other procedures. So how did you find out about this fellowship? Uh, so I targeted finding out about a fellowship at ST5 level. Fortunately for me I worked with some uh, great cornea consultants who inspired me to take up this uh, career and then I began resourcing the merits and demerits of uh, different fellowships uh, and I realized that uh, quite a lot of fellowships have certain components missing from it. Uh, and certainly here in the UK, people were in their learning curve for DMEC. Uh, and hence, I had to either look for opportunities in Europe uh, or uh, across in North America. Uh, and I chose Canada because I found that the components of the fellowship uh, gave me a one-stop shop kind of fellowship. Okay, and um, what work did you have to do to be able to get the fellowship? Yes, there were numerous challenges and among the major challenges I had was organising the visa. I took my family with me uh, and hence I had to complete a lot of formalities. Uh, it took at least about six months to organise all of that. How far in advance did you apply for the fellowship? Uh, some of these fellowships are very keenly sought after, much like in the UK at a good centre. And uh, I, I began uh, pursuing and applying for this fellowship at least about two and a half years in advance. And um, what was your typical week like when you were there? Uh, the typical week uh, involved uh, seeing about, we had three outpatient clinics in the week uh, and we saw about 80 to 100 patients of different pathologies. Uh, and we had two theatres uh, in that week. Uh, we were totally four fellows uh, at any one time with two perceptors and uh, hence uh, the volume of work was equally shared but um, I would say that uh, we had rotations going around every three months and that kind of gave us a different aspect of different procedures and pathology. Okay. And did you get to do what you expected? To do? Yes, uh, uh, they had a fantastic arrangement with uh, wet lab and the eye bank uh, within the same building and so we had lots of tissue to practice with, which is very important to learn some of these laminar procedures. Uh, and so we practiced on more than 50 eyes before we could actually get onto a patient and perform some of these procedures. And why did you go for two years? Uh, I went for two years because uh, some of these procedures are very challenging and uh, the more you do, the more confident you are. Uh, and so in your first year, you're just kind of getting to grips with the procedure and in the second year you're actually uh, a much more comfortable uh, and if you've done sufficient numbers much like doing FACO you would actually have come across some problems which you can iron out and look out for in the future. Okay and um, did you find there were any challenges or difficulties when you were there? Uh, challenges uh, for Toronto and Canada geographically where it was was very very cold. Uh, and for four months of the year that was the challenge mm -hmm. uh, because it, it went to minus 20 and with the wind chill it went to minus 40 on some days uh, but uh, you have to make friends with the weather if you have to survive in that country uh, and so on the flip side of it I enjoyed uh, learning to ski and ice skate. Okay, uh, were there any financial um, downfalls? Yes, I, I would like to use the words of my good friend Gwyn Williams. Uh, I did experience the same financial Armageddon that he did uh, but we all knew about this and hence uh, you have to prepare for it. Uh, I was fortunate that my family helped me out with it. I did get a grant from the Royal College which I was grateful for which enabled me to travel and cover some of the costs for it. Would you give any advice to any other trainees wanting to go abroad, uh, yes, not necessarily for cornea? Yes surely, I mean uh, by and large any fellowship that you actually look for 
you need to know uh, uh, what the fellowship offers and how you can apply it when you come back if you if you are planning to come back to the UK so you have to actually uh, find out in your personal circumstances where would you like to see yourself in five years and that's not an interview question alone but it's a personal question and it's a real question do you want to be in a district hospital do you want to be in a university hospital if you want to be in a university hospital what would that hospital want out of you if you want to practice in a district general hospital what's your practice going to be like and accordingly then or if you already know where which hospital you're going to work in find out from that hospital what they want out of you and then you can look for fellowships whether it's local or whether it's abroad if you're looking to go abroad then you need to be prepared two years in advance at least I think that's my advice and any advice to anyone who wants to uh, do a fellowship in cornea specifically whether it's in the UK or abroad? Uh, again with cornea uh, you'd want to actually look at to see who your preceptor is uh, try and reach out to them well in advance uh, make sure you have uh, your good amount of publications because these fellowships are very very competitive uh, try and get to to learn some of the techniques before or even if you've never done any of these techniques try and visit a center which is doing them so you're familiar with those techniques and want, and wouldn't be left wondering if I'm good, going to be good at it am I happy to do these procedures so I went around a, a couple of units before I went for my fellowship to see the different procedures they do uh, and the outcomes of it and I was quite happy to pursue that and when you say to get in contact with people that do the fellowships what do you mean? Uh, when I say uh, in contact, I, I can only talk from my experience um, because uh, these fellowships are so keenly sought, as I said earlier, they receive at least about 10 applications a day and they won't be able to tell one person from the other. So I would say that, you know, it's best to kind of reach out personally and the best way to do it is try and uh, meet them at conferences uh, and follow that up with a conversation so that at least then they can put a name to the CV uh, and they and you have you stand a better chance with that I'd also make a visit and I did go myself across uh, about a year and a half before the fellowship to actually see the department meet my preceptors uh, and I think that kind of reinforced the fellowship okay um, since you've come back uh, from your fellowship and taken up a consultant job uh, have you faced any difficulties or problems or well, it, there are always going to be difficulties or challenges. There'll always be a case you've never done in your training or fellowship or probably just seen. Uh, but that's what the good fellowship does to you. It kind of gives you a basic principle in management of any kind of case. And you will then be able to manage all sorts of difficult cases after that. Okay. Thank you for letting us interview you today. Thank you, Amy. Okay. Thanks a lot. Best of luck.